Today we will be doing a very special service for you guys as usual. Uh, up next we have worship and then after that we will have a very special someone doing their testimony and preaching for you guys today. I hope you guys all stay in and tune in and uh, I'll see you right after the worship. Thank you God for everything you made us go through and still saving us every day. And thank you for you brought us this whole week through and still
everyone else calls me Elu, and I'm here on God's stage to tell you guys about my testimony. I've kept my testimony to myself for a while now for a few reasons, and that's so I can see how it all plans out and hopefully learn a few things about my great moment with God. Not only that, but I felt the need to continuously pray about when or how I should speak on it and how I could tell the word. I thought it was a great idea that I waited until now because now I know what to say and I know how to speak on it. Also, if you ever want to come up here and preach the word or share your testimony, be sure you pray about it first and then let Kenna or Elsa know about it because I believe that as children of God, we all have something to teach others. All right, well, let's go to my testimony. Well, as you all know, I've always been, I've always grown up with a few health obstacles throughout my life, especially with my allergies and asthma, and they would always flare up, but my medicine would always fix it, so I was so used to relying on my medicine to help me. But this one night, a month or two ago, I wasn't feeling well, so I just popped my inhaler before I went to bed, hoping it would do the trick, but instead, I woke up around like 4 a.m., coughing and wheezing, and basically trying my best to breathe all night, and I told myself, oh, it's whatever. I should be used to this by now. And like spring is coming. This is normal for people with asthma. So I used my inhaler again and tried to go back to sleep. But then it didn't work. I woke up 30 minutes later with my chest feeling heavier than ever and I couldn't sleep. And literally it felt like someone was strangling my lungs and I just thought I was gone. So I had no choice but to use my nebulizer medication. And for those who don't know what a nebulizer medication is, it's this machine that I use to help me breathe. And I base, uh, in case my inhaler doesn't work, and it's like my last choice because it makes me shake and it just works really well, but I try to use it as a minimum. But uh, anywho, yeah, so I took my nebulizer downstairs because it makes this loud noise and I didn't want to wake up the family. But when I started it, I realized that the ne nebulizer had absolutely no effect on me. And I couldn't feel the medicine working through me and I was terrified and scared. Like if my medicine couldn't heal me, then what will? No. That's when I thought that today was the last day of my life. So many thoughts were going through my head and I literally saw my life flash before me. I saw and thought of all the things that life and God has given me, especially my friends, my family, and the amazing lifestyle that I grew up with. And I just became extremely grateful for everything at that moment. I couldn't stop crying because at that moment I really thought I was going to die. I was trying to breathe but I couldn't and I was just so scared and then I felt something. I felt God just trying to keep me warm and calm, and then I was okay with leaving the earth and joining my God. It literally got to the point where I made my peace and I was okay to die right then and there. So then I just started praying. I started praying, I started praying for the world that was my home for the past 16 years of my life, my family and my friends. Instead of praying for my healing, it felt right in my heart to just send one last prayer and just thank God for everything that he has given me. After my prayer, I just wanted to worship. I, I wanted to worship and sing one last time, not for me, but for the glory of God, because He gave me this voice, He gave me this amazing life, He gave me this community and this amazing church, and He's the reason that I live. God gave me life, God is my life. And worshiping is just a part of who I am. I worshiped Him through one of the most powerful songs I've possibly listened to. It's called Even When It Hurts by Hillsong. We sang it today for worship, and I wanted you guys to listen to the lyrics for yourself. But yeah, the words just made me cry for God, and He came to me when I sang that song. I encountered God, and do you know what it feels like? It felt so good, like I can't even explain it. He was just talking to me by His presence. Like His own presence speaks for itself. And I mean this with all of my heart, it is literally so real, you guys. God's presence speaks for itself. We just need to cry out for it in your own way through your gift and calling. For some, it may be meditating by His Word, by praying, evangelizing, or if you're like me, worshiping. If you're consistent and pray about what God has called you out for, He will come to you. Like it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. You need to pray, look, and ask what your calling is. And when you find your calling, you will find that God is closer to you than you think. Now you all know who Jonah is. He was called by God to the city of Nineveh and to preach against their wickedness. And instead of doing what he was told, he ran away from the Lord and headed to Tar Tarshish on, and got on this boat. So God sent a big storm that would disturb the boat. 
When I first heard this story, I was like, whew, I better never get God mad. But as I kept reading this story, it made me realize the only reason God sent that storm was not to show his anger. Our God is too loving, he doesn't get angry. But he sent that storm to get Jonah, not punish him, because Jonah was called to preach. Sure, like God could have asked anyone else, but he specifically wanted Jonah to preach because that's what he was called for. Each and one of us are called to do something. We are blessed with a gift. Like it says in Romans 12, 6 to 8, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. And if it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. It just depends how you're going to use it. Are you going to fulfill your calling or are you going to run away and wait for a big fish to swallow you? If you're having trouble to find your calling, pray, pray, pray. And just like how I felt when my lungs were being strangled, the only thing I could do was pray. Just keep praying because that's how you are going to find all your answers throughout life. Seriously, it literally backs up everywhere in the Bible. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Pray, pray, pray. In James 5, 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Pray, pray, pray. In John 15, 7, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Pray, pray, pray. Do I need any more proof? Praying is everything. It is the base of our relationship with God. It's our communication line. Without it, we would be stranded. Without it, I would be dead. To find your calling, there is one step that you need to complete, and that's prayer. The first few times that I prayed, I thought of it as a, as a tradition. Like I never felt anything. It would just be eat before breakfast, eat before every single meal of the day, pray before you sleep, uh, pray before you go like uh, wake up. And but the more, but I thought of it as nothing. But then the more you continue it, the stronger you become in prayer. It's like practicing for anything. Repetition is the key to your success. You'll get better at it, you'll get better at it, and soon you'll realize the power of prayer. Just go into your room or anywhere private. You could even pray in the bathroom. Like you could not say that you don't have time to pray. Just find anywhere private and just use that time to get better at praying. In Matthew 6:6, 6, 6, it says, But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So when you try to pray more and do it sincerely, not only for not only will you feel stronger, but God will reward you. Now, I don't know if I have much more time, but um, that's all I have to say for today. But in conclusion, I want you guys to find your calling by praying and then fulfill it. You will never be too old or too young to find your calling. So this is me saying that start today. After we're done with the service, I want you to say this prayer. I want you to say, dear God, Thank you for this life, this family, and just for all you have given me. I ask for you to fill me with the Holy Spirit and to help me find my calling. Because God, I believe in you. I don't want to live in burdened by complications. So today I seek a life of simplicity by making you the one thing that my life consists of. Lead me into your plan for me because you wrote my story before I was born. Your plans will always succeed. And we all say, amen. So yeah. Thank you for letting me tell you guys my testimony and talk to you guys about your calling and prayer. And it was a great honor to be given the chance to speak on God's stage. Now may God bless you all. And I pray for him to guide you in whatever circumstance you are in right now. Have a blessed day. Ciao. Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? My name is Yasu Wushet, and I'm here to teach you about a strong foundation in Christ. Now, I've come here to share a wonderful message from God, and I hope this will be applied to your life. Um, as we all know, there have been many things that have brought fear to this world, and we don't know what to rely on. But I'm here to tell you that we need to rely on God. Now, other people may rely on other things for hope, and that will not be as good enough as God is. And these other things, 
sometimes they can do more bad than they do good. But um, like um, sometimes we rely on video games and other stuff that um, that we just put priority instead of God. And um, these things are not always bad, but we need more time to God. We need to put God first. Whenever we need to look hope, we go to God. Um, and these other things, they're known as weak foundation. What we want is a strong foundation. A strong foundation, uh, as you can see in uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 27, it says, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and he blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down and the streams rose. The wind blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. See, the strong foundation, the house that didn't break down through the storm, was the house um, that relied on God. God is our strong foundation. These weak foundation is anything that we put before God. Um, anything other than God. Um, See, um, God is our rock, and we can rely on Him to stay firm. Um, he'll never leave us too. Like in the story of Joseph, how he'd been betrayed by his brothers, sold as a slave. Um, then uh, he went to prison in Egypt, but he kept relying on God and prayed each night, and eventually he became the right-hand man to the Pharaoh. Um, got a high position and met with the, his family again. Um, also in the story of Daniel, how he was put into the lion's den and had no, um, and everyone was for sure that he was going to be eaten by the lions, but he prayed on to God and relied on him and he ended up becoming saved because he had a strong foundation in God. Um, now it may seem like there's no hope, but God is always there. Um, now how can we have a strong foundation in Christ? Um, well, number one, we have to know. We have to know what Jesus knows. Um, and how do we know? By His Word. It's all in this book. Um, uh, number two, we got to do. We got to do what Jesus tells us to do. Um, like everything He's done in the Bible, um, we're humble, we're showing love, we're doing anything, like helping the poor. Um, bringing them to Christ, um, just doing what God would do in the Bible. Um, and number three, the final one, uh, we have to desire. We have to desire to be like Christ every day. Desire to change. Uh, we just have to have a willing heart to do what He does. Uh, if uh, you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart, or if you, if you want to grow a stronger foundation, I ask you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart, wash me clean. I make you my Lord and Savior. Help me to know what you know, do what you do, and desire to be like you. Now your name is in the book of life, and you don't have to turn back. Just rely on God whenever things may look rough for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
By His grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of His Word instantly comes to pass in your spirit, and when you are born again, there is a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 